where we look at a country's uh, actions. And one is prevention, one is protection, and one is prosecution. Prevention is really about creating an environment where people uh, talk about trafficking and make people understand what it is and how to prevent it. Prosecution is pretty obvious. Is the government prosecuting people or not? Last year, there were no prosecutions. There were more investigations than the previous year. And how is it possible that the Attorney General's office couldn't find anyone from those investigations to prosecute? I, I just find that amazing when you have more than 100 investigations that were conducted. It raises questions in my mind about the interest and the seriousness with which this crime is viewed and pursued. And then in terms of protection, the shelters for trafficked victims around this country are in abysmal condition. The United States last year signed new agreements to provide $15 million to help protect children, and they are not um, looking at the deplorable conditions of children in the fishing industry on Lake Volta or uh, along the coast. In 2007, I believe, it was about nine years ago, the BBC did a story on uh, trafficking in uh, the fishing industry here in Ghana. Very little has changed in nine years. And our press release is a call to action because if the government does not take this more seriously, my government will be forced by our own law to restrict our assistance to Ghana. And that is the last thing that we should be doing. Our assistance in health, education, um, and uh, agriculture is helping millions of people. We're asking that the government of Ghana focus on what's happening with tens of thousands of people so that we can continue to assist the millions. And we will also work with the government on helping those tens of thousands. But it has to be a partnership. We cannot want to address modern-day slavery more than the government of Ghana I've been wants aware to. that the U.S. government has been working with the Ghanaian government over the years. Yes. To work on human trafficking. But that but commitment seems now, to be slipping. It, yeah, I get the impression not much is being achieved. That's our impression, and that's but why I want people to money. understand this is a problem. You just give them the money and don't care if they do the job? Well, we do care, and so that's precisely... why are they doing it? Well... I think you need to ask the government that question. <laughs> but I, I want them to answer that very question. Yeah, because if why you give me they, money to do some job... Why aren't you using it? And I'm not doing the job, you, you don't want to see your money go waste. So you right. insist that I do the job. What have you done so far? So this press release is the first step in... And I, I met with government officials before the, the report was release. issued okay. and before the press release to... Warn and they them told that this you nice coming. things as usual? Yes. Do you believe them this time? I will believe them when I see action. <laughs> I, I have been assured for the entire six months that I've been here that the government is taking this seriously, but I have not seen evidence of that. The argument people make is most of these children are actually helping their family members. Right, but that's not true. And if the government itself investigates... You can see which children are well-clothed and going to school and working, and you can see which children are being uh, treated abysmally, are poorly clothed, are doing the most dangerous work. That's really very clear. And non-governmental organizations can see it. People in government can see it if they look. So if the government is not being efficient, why aren't you using civil society organizations? We are using civil society organizations, but civil society organizations do not have the authority to prosecute people, so, which is what we really need to address this problem. So why don't you concentrate on prevention so we don't need to prosecute So anybody? we have set up shelters, but people cannot be 
we can't send you or me into a fishing community and say we're taking these children away. We have no authority to do that. Only the government, the police, have the authority to do that, and we're asking them to take their responsibility seriously. And what's the root cause of that, in a way? So let, let's take that in two ways. So people will say the root cause is poverty. I agree that the root cause is poverty. But if I want your child to come work for me in the fishing industry, I'll come to you and say, oh, let me take your child to, to Cape Coast, and I will make sure the child goes to school and the child will help me in the morning before school and in the afternoon after school, but it, he or she will be well taken care of. But there's no follow-up to make sure that that child is well taken care of. I think parents are not consciously sending their children to be exploited, but I don't think there's enough communication and enough follow-up. There's too much trust in these traffickers when people should be asking far more questions and being far more demanding about monitoring what's happening. Have you considered using sociologists in the education process in dealing with this issue? Because I think it's a sociological yes, problem as well. It, it is a sociological problem, but it's a societal problem too. I would like to see this be a campaign issue. I think it's a very serious problem for Ghana. It won't win a vote to any, for any politician, so it's not going to be. Well, then it goes back to why is that the case? Why shouldn't people care about whether these children are in school? They are the future of Ghana. Why shouldn't people care if these children are being abused? That's a bad reflection on the entire society. That's absolutely right. I mean, but then, what can the public do if the public doesn't understand the issue? So, it's through our conversation, for example, that we can raise understanding and awareness. But the public can also say, I believe that child is being abused and report it to the local authorities, to the police. If enough reports of abuse are received, I believe it would be hard for the Attorney General's office and the police to ignore those reports. Have they given you any specific reasons why they are unable to prosecute anybody after almost 100 investigations? No. And you didn't demand that? I asked, but I didn't get a straight answer. So what else do you do next? Well, our next step is to, is to say that our entire assistance program is in jeopardy. All non-humanitarian assistance okay. is on the table. And if they say they don't care because it's just a couple of hundred million dollars. Well, but let's talk about what it is. We're talking about $500 million for the energy sector under the Millennium Challenge Compact. We're talking about another $500 million that would be invested by the private company that would manage ECG going forward. So that's $1 billion right there. In addition, we're talking about $146 million a year for health, education, and agriculture. So there's that. There's also additional money for military assistance, for counterterrorism training, for work with the Election Commission. Now, next year will not presumably be an election year, so we probably won't be working with the Election Commission. But those are the types of programs that will be on the chopping block. So in total, how much aid do you give to Ghana? So in total, next year, I anticipate that it will be about $250 million, plus or minus, uh, a few uh, million dollars, which is a lot of money already. Um, but not very significant for a country like Ghana. Not very significant, but enough to make a difference. Maybe not. But if you could be assured that the investment in the electricity sector would allow factories to operate without worrying without having to use their generators and bring costs down, if you could be assured that uh, every primary school in the country is going to have uh, new books, 
if you could be assured that more people will be enrolled in the National Health Insurance Program, if you could be assured that new agricultural uh, programs, especially irrigation projects, will be launched, isn't that concrete enough to, to tempt you to act? So apart from withholding aid to Ghana, what other measures... Well, I'm, I'm cajoling, but my cajoling has not gotten us very far, which is why I'm trying to raise the profile of this issue. So um, I cannot it want... It doesn't work. But I cannot... If we get to that point, but hopefully we shouldn't... We if shouldn't we get to that point. But I cannot want this more than Ghanaians. And I understand that. I am a foreigner here. This is not my country. I can so offer you have assistance... A moral I do, and that's why I'm raising the issue. And Ghanaians have a moral obligation, too. They have an obligation to their to children, their, their relatives, their own people. And they are not taking that obligation as seriously as I believe they should. Would you restrict visa to public officials if it gets to the worst point? We could consider it. Um, actually... Um, one senator has proposed that we restrict visas to all Ghanaians because we are not receiving cooperation on uh, deportation of people convicted in, of crimes in the United States and returned to Ghana. Um, so this is something that's under discussion in my government. But again, that would be a very drastic step that I would be very reluctant to take and would only take if I felt that there were no remaining options. And I'm insisting, what if the government doesn't budge? The government doesn't budge, we will look at all options. We will look at visas and we will look at assistance. And are you certain to implement this? I do not want to predict what we will or will not do because... Let's assume it happens. The government doesn't budge. Nothing is done about human trafficking. Then you will see you cuts in no assistance, options. I'm Nothing sure of that. You're going to see those. Uh, we're going to see those sanctions. Yes. And I can take your word for that. Yes. And so you believe that if I if I write a story and I tell the politicians this is going to happen, you think they would act? I hope so. That's why I'm sitting down with you right now. Thank you very much.